for giving me a roof. Thank you for buying my vehicle. Thank you for food. Thank you uh, for what you're doing for us. Thank you for taking care of me and my siblings. Thank you. How much more does our Father in Heaven appreciate us when we come to Him and say, God, thank you I woke up this morning. God, thank you. My, my knee may be hurting a little bit, but I still have activities of my limb. Thank you, oh God, for the right mind that you've given me. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. I may not have everything the way Chris wants, but I'm still here. And we tell him, thank you. I, I want to tell Pastor, I, I call him Pop, so y'all have to. Pop, me and my wife were talking the other day, and she told me, she said, How are you so country and your brother them so sick? I said, I don't know, but I'm glad. I would not want to be a city boy. You better say that. Just me. Amen. You know, she said, You are just country. And I said, I love it. Uh, I love going out, uh, going to the lake. Bringing my own food home to cook, going getting fish, going in the woods, bringing a deer. I love doing things of my own hand. Amen. Uh, and 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 she um she she told me how that she said you is just country and and I'm telling you that because I may say some stuff that don't uh, line up with proper English and 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 and, and, and what they call it. Verb agreement, noun and verb agreement. My stuff might not match up, but you're going to know what I'm going to say. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for your pa for Pastor Bowman. I call him Pop, so y'all excuse me. Uh, he, he, he's, he's that type of father figure to me, and I've known him a long time. And uh, it's, it's not many people. I can tell you this is the only one I know. This is the only sergeant major I know. <laughs> and, and I don't know if y'all are military or not, but th uh, that's a high rank. Uh, on, 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 uh, on, you've got two different sides, but on his side, you can't go no higher. And you're talking about a man who uh, is of great stature. Physically, <laughs> uh, he's a big man, but not only that, but in everything that he does, you know where you stand with him. He don't sugarcoat anything. He say what he say. He mean what he say. Uh, and I thank God for him, uh, for his wife. Um, and it's so odd how Sister Betty and I met. You know, I work. I was at work, and she, I just would always see her, and I was like, Who is this woman? Always smiling, always nice. I'm like, Is she this nice all the time? Uh, so anyway, she and I somehow or another end up talking one day. Uh, I think she had came in the office or something and we just got to shooting the breeze, just talking and uh, found out she was married to Pops and, you know, we kept talking and um, she's just a wonderful lady. You know, they, they are, they're great people. You know, during the, um, the, the last ice storm, we were able to share some times together and enjoy each other and, and it's just good when... Uh, you got, you know, because I'll tell anybody, my wife will tell you, I don't call many folks friends at all. <laughs> that ain't a word I use. Uh, that, that, that's not a word that I use because, uh, but when folk prove themselves to you in your life, you know, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, and I thank God for who they are in our life. He talked for a minute, he briefly spoke on prayer and how prayer is not a, and I used to, I tell my congregation, prayer is not a physical position. It's a spiritual position. You know, because oftentimes you driving, you might not be able to go and drop to your knees and pray while you're driving. But when you can, you think Peter dropped to his knees when he was out in the boat, when he, uh, when he was walking on water? Do you think he had time to go and bow down? No, the Bible says that he just called out to what? Called out to Jesus and said, Lord, save me. Yes, Lord. So he didn't have time to go and drop to his knees, but he knew that he had a prayer that was in him that came out. Amen. 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 So I, I thank God to uh, for this opportunity um, to come and minister here. You know, Pastor also said about uh, you know he was saying about how the young. The Bible says that the young is for war. And the older, the elders are for wisdom. I thank God for the wisdom that I get from Him. Just talking to Him, just share Him sharing uh, things with me, you know. And and I tell people all the time, I love talking with 
people that are more seasoned than me. That's a good word. Eh? Mm. <laughs> I love people that are more seasoned Very good. than I am because you get wisdom. Uh, and, and he also spoke earlier about wives and and I'll tell you, it's, it's a funny story. My wife joined the church years back, and I was in the world. I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. So don't look at me crazy if you hear some of my dirt from my past. Don't look at me crazy. Amen. Uh, because the Bible says that we overcome by the what? Blood of the Lamb. The Word. Of our testimony. You can't have a testimony. Yeah, I been there. <laughs> so I can't tell you something I ain't been through. So don't look at me crazy when you hear some of the stuff I did. Thank you, Lord. But um, I was in the world and, you know, doing my thing, drinking, partying, doing what I do. And my wife was had met a um, friend girl and they started going to this church. And she was coming home telling me about church and this and that. And I'm like, go get me a beer. Go get me a drink. Go do so. I don't want to hear that. Don't, don't, I don't want to hear that. And, and so she was, she was talking to me about the word and everything. And I'm, at the time, I'm like, mm, not what I want to hear. So she, um, she kept it. She stayed on it. She, she kept going to church. And, and I'm like, Okay, well, maybe something to it. So one day, it was a Wednesday, I'll never forget. I was low on gas, Pastor. I ain't had, when I say low on gas, I'm talking about it was doubly low under the line. So I say, God, if you get me to the gas station, I'll go to Bible study with her tonight. So uh, I'm driving, my car putting, I see the gas station, and my car cuts off, and it literally coasts. Up to the pump. Literally. It coasts up to the pump. And I say, well, I got to stand true to my word. I said, if you get me here, I'm going to go to buy. And, and, and been with God ever since. You know, it's, it's not. That may sound good. But she stayed on me and stayed on me. She didn't beat me down. She didn't use the word trying to whoop me. She just used the word Amen. to lead me and encourage me. And I thank God for that. I thank God for my. Um, my church family who's come out. Uh, my mama, she'll wave her hand. Hester Lockridge, my mama's here. Amen. Uh, I, my sister Jean, my oldest, well, next to the oldest sister. My nephew, he's asleep. Uh, my son, uh, we can call him little Chris, but he's bigger than me. Uh, my son, Chris, my uh, other sister, D, if you'll wave your hand. Amen. And I call him my other mama, Miss Betty. Oh, right now. Who, who shared with us. So I thank God for you. Amen. And to the prettiest woman in Warren County. <laughs> now, I used to hear Pastor Fisher say all the time, it's a sad frog, no praise his own pond. Amen. I tell anybody. And I ain't doubting, I'm not, uh, you know, every man can say what they want, but I know mine, and I feel this way. I feel I have the prettiest wife in the world. You That's better not. say it. And if a man right. don't feel that way, wives find another. But mine is, my oh, wife. Hey, so dear, well, I thank God for it. <laughs> she, uh, I'll tell you, you know, she, she, she doesn't, she's quiet. She does, people can mistake her quietness for arrogance, or anything, but she's an introvert. She's just quiet. That's her. I'm yeah. loud in the country. I talk to everybody. That's just my personality. Oh, I'm loud. But I, I, uh, she does not like being bragged on, but I brag on her. She oh, just God. recently, um, she's been a nurse 25, 26 some odd years. She just went back and finished. She got her doctorate in nurse practitioner, so now she, hopefully one day she'll open her own practice. We're not sure yet, but uh, she just graduated about two weeks ago, and this past Friday, yesterday, day before yesterday, she passed her her board test. So yeah, she, amen. Amen. High five. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That was good. She gonna fuss at me later. You know, no, no, no. I pray. That's all right. You can go through it. Because it, because it was all, and she'll tell you it was all him. It was all, it was all him. Because it was a many times she shed tears. Uh, without prolonging the time, first I want to pray before we get into the Word. So if you'll give me a moment, let's pray. God, we thank you for this day, God. We honor you. We worship you. 
We give your name glory. I thank you for the men and women who've come out to hear a word today, God. My prayer, my desire is that you set Chris down, set Chris aside. I ask that you just use my vocal cords today to, to bless your people, to give your people a word, uh, that you be glorified, that you be uplifted. I pray for those who all came out and those who couldn't, those who are hearing by way of uh, internet, by way of technology, Lord, we thank you for thank them. You. I pray that uh, this word go forth to move them, to touch them, to bring them closer to you, Father, all for your glory, to just to let them know, Father, that as your word tells us that you never leave us, nor will you forsake us, oh God. We thank you for you being faithful, Father, in spite of our faithlessness, Father. We thank you for your faithfulness in our life, God. We thank you for all that you're doing, will do, and will continue to do, Father. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we honor, thank, and praise you. Amen. 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 We have your Bibles. We have two scriptures, and I won't be before you long. I'm not a long-winded preacher, but I'm going to give you what God gave me. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to Acts, the ninth chapter. We'll go there first. And also, second Thessalonians. Now I'm going to tell you, this is one of them chapters that will hide from you. This is one of them books that will hide. So if, if you um, go to the Pauline letters and kind of go to the end and, and, and you'll find it. That's one of the best ways to tell you. Go to Philippians, uh, uh, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians and go a couple scriptures to the, couple chapters to the right. A couple books to the right and you'll find Thessalonians. But first we go to Acts, Acts the ninth chapter. Acts the ninth chapter. Pastor, if I get the word, you'll read for me, please. Acts the ninth chapter. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did he hear, eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Yes. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayed. And, and had seen in a vision in a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, lo, answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that called on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went, in, went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mayest, mayest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it, had, as it had been scales, and he received sight forwith, and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, 
he was strengthened. Then we saw certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on his name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased in more in increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that, many days were fulfilled that the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying awake was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him, and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, and brought him to the apostles, and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out as Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and di disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to, to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest through all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all the quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which was interpretation called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deed which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. When they had washed, they laid when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber, and forasmuch as Lydda was not not to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring, that, desiring him that he, would not lay, that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa, which once with one Simon a tanner. Amen. 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 Second Thessalonians. Third chapter, verses. Second only in the third chapter. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from the unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, but the Lord is faithful, who shall yes, establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command. And the Lord direct your hearts in the, into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw your, yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition he received of us. Of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail day and night, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all. 
but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye brethren be not weary in well doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle, so I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. 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 You see in there, we heard that scripture so many times. Man don't work, you don't eat. I love over in Acts, in the ninth chapter, we were reading in Acts, the ninth chapter, uh, in, in verse 5, I'm going to read it. He said, and he said, well, I'll go up four. And he fell to the earth, talking about Paul when he was uh, on his horse, and he fell to earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, now listen to this. And he said, who art thou, Lord? He answered the question, he asked the question with an answer. Amen. He knew, he said, who art thou, big L, Lord? And the Lord said, I am. You know who I am. You've already acknowledged who you who you uh, think I am. You called me Lord. He said, and who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the priests. If we have to have a title for this message, God got my back. You better say it. I just, I, I wish I could just literally high five Jesus. God has my back. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to start this sermon off and ask you a couple, ask you two questions. Who cares about you and your and your soul more than anybody? God. God. Who cares about us more than the Bible calls him and says we know we have a friend that sticks closer. Close. Than than a brother. I remember growing up with my brother. I remember, it was this one situation, and I tell them all the time, I broke a thermometer in my house. And I was, I don't know, 12, 13 years old, so my brother had to be 15, 16. I broke the thermometer. For whatever reason, my mama thought my brother did it. So she beat him. I'm talking about beat him. And I was back there watching that, I'm like, Oh, partner, you're going to have to take this one for the team. I ain't getting in on that one. So I just sat there. But see, that's God. God's not like that with us. He's Man. someone who, in the Bible says, he's a very present help Amen. in the time of trouble. Yes. Friends and family will walk away, turn their back on you, do whatever. But God sticks with us. Don't you know? Yes. Yes. He's, I thank God he's not like man. Amen. Because too often, Amen. man show, man show you, that. Yeah, I heard that saying all the time, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. Amen. Amen. God has proven himself faithful in my life. I don't know about you all, but he's proven himself faithful in my life. He's it, it, Times when he could have kicked me to the curb, he could have had no dealings with me. But the Bible says in, in John, the third chapter, I think verse 17, it says how, and I'm going to go there so I don't mess this up. John 3, 17. I want to say this specifically. It said, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't send his son here to get rid of Chris Lockridge for all the foolishness Amen. that he did. He came here to see, sent him here to save him. He knew that I would do this. He knew that I would do that. But he still loved, he's, the Bible says, he oh so loved the world. 316. For God so loved you know how when you're talking to our spouse, we tell them, oh, I love you so, so much. Y'all do that? I'm the only one. <laughs> Rip, you do that to me? Oh, yes. Yeah. He said he so loved the world that he gave his only son. 
his only son. Do you know how much love that, a, that he has to have to send a perfectly innocent person to be a sacrifice for a world that's up for some that don't even care nothing about it. Amen, amen. For some people that don't care anything about it, that say that God ain't real, that say that there is no God, that say that this God is not the true and the living God. He said, I love them people so much that I'm still going to send my son because I know that a sheep and a goat and a ram, their blood is not good enough. I need something that's better. I need a perfectly pure sacrifice so that the world, so that when they finish down here, that they can have eternity with me. He loved us just that much. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Y'all ever got, anybody other than me ever got into a fight? I told y'all I wasn't perfect all my life. Don't look at me crazy. Y'all ever got into a fight? Oh, yeah. And, and you knew that your brother or your sister or, or your cousin or somebody... Uh, may have been around. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna put Sister Betty under the bus. My sister, <laughs> that, that one there. All right. Right. I pray for her. Y'all pray for her. That sister. Hallelujah. Y'all pray for me with Sister Betty. <laughs> but you, you ever uh, got into a fight and you knew your brother or your sister or your rel one of your relatives was around, so you wasn't worried what they was talking about because you knew that they was there with you. Amen. You knew that if something went down, they got your back. How much more do our Father in Heaven tells us he got our back? When energy get to calling and you ain't got but a couple of dollars left and payday is another week away, Y'all ain't had times like that, but I've had times where me and my wife get low. It's t we got $20 left, and we got three, four days until payday. Energy calling, car no calling, house no calling. But God said that I will supply you all your needs. Every need by my Father in heaven. Who cares about you more than anyone? Our Father in heaven. The Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. There's no friend, no husband, no wife, no co-worker, no boss. There is no one. I don't care how much your spouse or your, your parent may love you. They do not care about you more than the Father who created us. Unfortunately, in today's society... In today's society, folks don't really care about other folk like they used to. You know, I remember back in the, the 70s and 80s when I was growing up, we lived in apartments. And I could go, when we run low on, on milk or sugar, we could go knock on the neighbor's door. We can't do that no more, y'all. Those days are long gone where we go knock up. Because now if we do it, what's going to happen? They gonna call the poor neighbor. Can you believe Chris came over and asked me to borrow some sugar? <laughs> or what they gonna do is they gonna go to church and say, "Hey, Pastor, let's put Brother Pastor Chris on the prayer list because he need." You know they don't call it. They call themselves helping you out, but being messy, putting your business in the street. <laughs> God loves us so much that he says, I'm a very present help in the time of trouble. When you need, I'm not turning my back on you. I care more about you than the own people, the, the very people that you sit with daily. God cares more about us than anything. If we look at society and, and, and everything that goes on and how people are, it's so it, it's so tough. It's so hard to hear people say things like this when something bad happened. It's so hard hearing people say stuff like this. Well, I'm glad it wasn't me. I, 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 so what are we saying? Are we glad it was our brother? Because the Bible clearly tells us when our brothers happy, we should be happy. When our brother weep, we should weep. Why? Because wind changes direction. We never know when that something is going to happen, so we should always stay prayed up for our brother. Keep our brother uplifted. Keep our friends uplifted. You know, that old saying, action speaks louder than words. 
is nothing that's too hard for God. That's right. We ourselves short God's power because we don't fully trust and believe. We believe what our eyes see. That's why the Bible clearly tells us in Hebrews, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence what you can't see. If we could close our eyes and stop watching our surroundings, to, see, that's our problem. We watch, we, we look at our surroundings and things that go on around us, and we dictate our future or our life by what we think is possible instead of what we should know is possible for God. We limit God too much. We limit Him entirely too much, but when we can just allow God to be God in our life and to have His way in our life and to say, okay, God, it ain't my will no longer. It's about what you want me to do, God, because I can mess something up. I will, man will mess something up. But when we can just sit back and say, God, not my will, Lord, but your will be done in my life. Amen. Actions speak louder than words, y'all. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, our Father loves us unconditionally. Regardless of our faults, you know, because some people got love for you as long as you do right by me. I'm laughing because it's an inside joke between me and my wife. But as long as you do right by me or do what I want you, you to do, I'm right. happy. Right. Everything yeah. good is, is right. kosher. Yeah. Everything right. is fine as long as you're doing what I want you to do. But when you stop doing what I want you to do, how do you feel about me? How do you think about me when I stop doing what you want me to do, or when I don't do what you think I should do, how do you feel about me at that point? Do you throw me to the curb, or do you stick with me? Because I can truthfully tell you, God should have, if, 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 I, if he wasn't the God that he is, he would have thrown Chris away a long time ago. I don't know about y'all, but he would have thrown me away a long time ago. But he kept this. He kept his word. He, as he does, he keeps his word. He loves us so much, despite of what we do. He got our back. Now, does he want us to do those things? I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, he don't turn his back on us like friends do. When friends see you doing this, and they go the opposite way because they don't agree with what you're doing. God says, I, st I may not agree with what you're doing. I may not like what you're doing, but I love you. God has our back. He loves us unconditionally. And I say that because he gave his all by sending his son, Jesus, to die for us, to die for our sins, to die for a world that cared nothing about him. He loved us that much. And on top of that, he rose three days afterwards. Because all power is in his hands. Our God is faithful. He loves us. And today in the world, there are some people who feel lost. They feel nobody loves them. So, And in essence, when they feel that way, Pastor, they turn to things in the world. Amen. They turn to the world. They turn to drugs. They turn to alcohol. They turn to violence. They turn to crime. Whatever in the world, what the world is offering, what they see, they'll turn to it because they feel help. Y'all ever felt less than, or felt not, uh, felt that life was over, that you couldn't get past this storm that you're in at this time, that you want to just give up, that you want to just throw in the towel, that you want to say, Lord, I can't deal with this no more. I can't take this no more. I'm tired. I'm at my end. God, Lord, I want to just give. Y'all ever had them give up moments? Oh, yeah. Where you want to throw in the towel? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, you, that you just say. That. But see there, that's when I go to thinking about Galatians 6-9 where he say, Don't get weary don't get in well-doing well because if you hang in there, you shall reap if you don't faint. Too often we give up before we get to the end of the race. Amen. 
You know, we we we, and it's not scripture. And and if if it, 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 it's not scripture, this is not a scripture. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong. That he that is doing to the end, that's not a scripture. It's part of a scripture. Excuse me, I almost took a tumble. It's part of a scripture. Part of it says. The race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong. And it goes on to say some different things. But too often we give up before we get to where God wants us to be. But if we just hang in there, y'all, God says that I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to turn my back on you. And that is good news. Trust me, that is good news. I know firsthand I couldn't preach and tell you something or give you a testimony if I hadn't been through a test and know God to be. Does anybody other than me know God to be a deliverer? Anybody know God to be a savior, a healer? You ever had times where you laid up and God, you just praying, Lord, please, touch I can't take this. And we know God to be a healer. We go through, We I tell my church all the time, Pastor, think about the hardest thing you've been through in life. <laughs> The hardest time, and I'm, 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 I'm asking you all this. Think about the hardest time you've had in life. The toughest point of your life that you thought was designed to take you out. Amen. You thought this, this, this storm was designed to take you out. You thought this storm came and there's no recovering from it. You can't get through it. You can't get by this. Lord, I want to just give up. You think about that hard time. I, I don't know what it may be in your life, but think about the hardest thing that you've been through in life. And think, and think about you still here. Think about that you made it through that storm that you thought was designed to take you out. And God says, I held your hand during that. And I'm still here. Just like that poem, Footprints in the Sand. You say, Lord, why you leave me at the hardest time of my life when I was going through and I was about to lose my mind. I felt like I was about to give up. I wanted to take myself out. I've had those suicidal thoughts. Y'all yeah, may not have ever had that. Well, y'all, my life may have been perfect, but I've had those times where I wanted to just give up, yes. give in, because this battle was too strong. Yeah, but that's yeah, when God yeah, says, son, the battle ain't yours. It's, not. it's mine. Oh, glory my glory. shoulder's strong enough to handle it. I can carry it for glory. you. Yeah. Turn it over to me. Yeah. Give me that storm. Let me have yeah. it for yeah. you, Amen. because I'm strong enough to handle it. Yeah. Think about that storm that you thought was designed to take you out. And then think about how you still here. Think about that you're still here. And if you still here, God has a plan and a purpose for you. Just like he told Jeremiah, he said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God says, I got your back. Thank you, Lord. That's good news, preacher. I don't know about y'all, but to me, that's good news for God to tell me that he has my back. That's good news. God sent his son because he loves us. He sent him uh, because he never wanted us to be in a position where we thought that we were alone. You ever had those alone times where you feel like everybody against you? Amen. And God said, the world can be against you. But as long as you got me, yeah. I'm all you need. Yeah. I'm all that you need. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, the pastor quoted it a little while ago, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom, of God. the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Everything else, everything will fall. Just like that duck with the mama. Everything else going to fall in line behind him. Just stay behind him. Ride his coattail. Hang on. Grab a hold and hang on and let's go for the ride. Because as long as he's driving, Lord, I'll go wherever you take me to. I'm just along for the ride. Lead me, God. I will follow. Have your way in my life, God. God says when we seek him, we'll find him because... You know, y'all ever played that, that that game, hide and seek? Amen. God don't hide from us, y'all. He says, I'm too big to hide from you. 
He says, I'm here. I'm not leaving you. I'm not turning my back on you. I'm with you in the time of storm. Whatever's going on, just know I'm right. Now, he's what you call ride or die. How these young folks say ride or die? He's ride or die. That may be a worldly saying, but you know, you get the gist of what I mean. He's a ride or die. Amen. And he's going to be with us regardless of how we may feel. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. He says, in him we find love. In him we find joy. In him we find peace, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, faithfulness. Against such is not a law you can break. Well, I remember reading this scripture once in my profession, some may not know, um, how's the best way to say it? My profession is, say it again, what's she say? My profession is, um, our office sends people to prison, best way to say it, that's you know, tough way to say it, but that's what we do, I work in the DA's office. That's what we do. We, when a person breaks the law, it's our job to look at it accordingly, and we send people to prison. Not saying that we take joy in that, but that's the job that we have. So I looked at that scripture and thought about it. Hmm. Can I send somebody to prison for loving somebody too much? Can somebody go to prison for having too much joy? Can somebody go to prison for having too much peace? Can somebody go to prison for having for being too gentle, to being too good, for being too meek, humble, for being for having for not having a temper, a bad temper, for being faithful? Can anybody get in trouble? Can anybody do? Can anybody answer that question? Who can get in trouble for those things? Nobody, you can't. Against such, there's no law that you're breaking by loving somebody too much, by being good to a person, by being gentle, by being peaceful. The Bible says that we're called to be peacemakers. We're called to be peacemakers in this time. And when I was reading over going through that, I said, Lord, it ain't no law you can break by loving somebody. Now, is a difference between love and lust. Say that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Big difference between love and lust. Amen. I said love. That's right. Charity. Yeah. Love. Against yeah. such is. is no law. There's no law. But see what Satan does. I saw a sign once that says. Uh, and I'm trying to remember how it's. Uh, I, I saw it. It said, God makes everything beautiful, and Satan comes to destroy everything that God made beautiful, but to make it, to turn it to something ugly. But God takes everything ugly that Satan does and makes it beautiful. <laughs> Satan shows us a life of thrills, a life of fun, and, and, and he shows you that uh, it, it will not last. He shows you a life that the world says is fun. Come on, get up, take this meth, take, smoke this weed, uh, do this, do that. Go in the world and get on these drugs and have a blast and snort, uh, snort cocaine and let's just have a great party. Satan shows you those fun-filled times. Call it out. Wow. Yeah. But what he don't show you is how when you do those things, how you get addicted to it, and you go to selling your children. You sell your vehicles. You sell your home. You give up everything you have because you've got addicted to what Satan proposed and showed you was good. Jesus. It's a story I heard years ago. Uh, I heard Pastor Williams, John Williams, say this a long time ago, and I'm not going to say it correctly, but I'm going to tell you the best way I, I can remember him saying it. He says that 
there was this beautiful golf course. There was a beautiful golf course. Showed, so, Satan showed these people this. Uh, showed us this beautiful golf course, and uh, if if we follow him, that it's going to be beautiful. That is is pretty green grass, and people are having fun everywhere, and uh, they barbecuing over here. But then. Uh, and he's saying, if you choose this life, when you die, you'll come and you'll have the beautiful golf course and the green grass and all that. So you say, yeah, I want that. Who wouldn't? Yeah, I want that. But then you die and you go there and you're tormented. It's fire. You're hot. There's no water to, to cool your tongue. You're uncomfortable. You think about the worst pain you could be in. And you ask, you say, what happened? This is not what you showed me. He said, that was just advertisement to get you here. I showed you what it, I, I showed what it took to get you here. And God is telling us, don't fall for the tricks of Satan. Let's not fall for that. He showed us what, he, Satan will show us what we think we want. He'll tempt us with what we think that we want. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to know that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, and it's just like the wind, when the wind blows. Can anybody see the wind? Mm -hmm. But you feel the effects from it, don't you? <laughs> you? Nobody can see the wind, but we can feel it. We, see, we can see the effects from it. We see the trees blowing. We see debris blowing. We see dirt blowing. We see the effects from it, but we don't see the wind itself. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that he's good. God never said that this life, that things would be easy. He never said that things would be easy. And he said that we will have temptations. Temptations are going to come. But the Bible says there is no temptation that we can't overcome. Did y'all hear that? There is no temptation. That we cannot overcome. So if Satan now. Listen to this pastor. If Satan tempted Jesus. <laughs> now if he tempted Jesus. You're going to know, better know that he's going to tempt us. But regardless of him doing that. God has our back. My mind goes to in the story. When we were reading in Acts. Um, when Paul was persecuting the Christian. Because that's what he grew up saying. From his youth. That's what he grew up seeing. He grew up watching violence. He saw uh, Stephen crucified. He saw people being martyred, people being killed. But you never see in the Bible, you never see in the Bible where Saul ever attacked Jesus. You never see in the Bible where Saul attacked Jesus. We see where he attacked the believers mm -hmm. and the Christians. But this is what I like in this story. This is what I like. When they persecute and attack us y'all listen to this good when they persecute us when they attack us they're attacking Jesus also Amen. Yeah. Amen. when they persecute us when they attack us they're attacking Jesus also that means that the battle is not ours but the battle belongs to God God has our back in the time of trouble when they attack us when, when people come attack us attack our personality, attack who we are, God takes that personally. Why? Because it's just like when somebody bothers our children. Amen. What do we say? I know that they ain't bothering mine. God feels the same way about us. He loves us so much when people come bothering us. He's like, hold up now. I know they ain't bothering my, me and mine. So when folks bother us, we got to know God loves us so much that he got our back. We don't have to do anything. We That, that, that alleviates us from getting ourselves in trouble. Amen. So we can sit back and watch and be like, okay, y'all bold enough to bother. Do you know who my daddy is? You better say it. You gonna, do, you, do, you, do you know who my daddy is? And you going to bother me? I'm going to sit back. God, you handle it. I heard a preacher say, sick him, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. But and, and, and I'm about to close. I wanted you to know that without a shadow of a doubt, God has our back. He loves us so much 
unconditionally. Here in scripture in Acts, we see where Paul was persecuting Christian uh, Christians. Paul was doing all manner of evil. But God used, now if God can use someone, excuse me, Saul was, I'm sorry, excuse me, Saul was persecuting Christians. If God can use someone like Saul, who persecuted Christians, who God never gave up on. God didn't turn his back on him because remember the Bible says that God sent his son in the world to not condemn the world, but to save them. Paul was considered once, excuse me, Saul was considered one of those in the world whom God saved. Now, if, if, if God can send his son for Saul, for someone who persecuted him, talked about him, crucified and hurt those who prayed and loved God, Jesus. how much more Jesus. will he do for us yes. who yes. proclaim yes. and love him? How much more will he tell us, I'm a very present help in your life in the time of trouble? How much yes. more does he love us? How much more does he want to make sure that even though we're going through a pandemic, I'm going I'm I'm to somehow or another, I'm going to get a little stimulus to him and help him out. One way or another, God is going to provide. Satan thought he was doing something when he <laughs> slipped this little pandemic, this little <laughs> corona. He thought he was doing something. I'm about to tear the world up. I'm about to tear the, I'm about to get these Christians out of church. I'm going to shut all these churches down. I got them. I finally got them. Now, God, what you going to do? I finally got you. I'm shutting church down. Uh, okay, log on to your internet. Boom, we at church. How smooth is God? Amen. Every plot or plan that the enemy has tried, God had a count. Oh, you gonna shut them down where they can't go to church to the building? I'm gonna make it to where not only do they, oh, they usually have a hundred people in church. Hmm, okay. Now they got a thousand because they you got folks who are log on all day. Or, or because for one reason or another, they may be at work. We don't know what the, the people who are not able. They may have to work today. They may the vehicle may have stalled out on them. They might not could have came here. But they can log on. So more people have are hearing the word of God more now than prior to the pandemic. So Satan, I tell you, what you tried to do didn't succeed. Amen, amen. So when he tries his next trick, know this, God got our back and he's going to change it. Amen? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I pray my prayer, my desire is that there was something spoke today that minister to your heart to let you know that God has us. God has each of us and that he's with us in a time of trouble. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless you and I love